Well, here we are again, and as always, I'm really pleased to see you dropping into the channel. I've enjoyed reading the recent comments from people and want to make sure I address subject matter that you're actually interested in. So, in today's video, I want to show you how to create a single shot Milky Way portrait. This may be a shot of yourself, or perhaps you'll find someone else on hand to be your model. Either way, the principles and the way we go about shooting it are pretty much the same. Milky Way portraits are something I've been doing for many years and in the majority of cases I've been out there all by myself so they've become Milky Way selfies more often than not. Having said that, I've had quite a few adventures with other Nightscape photographers who have been kind enough to embrace the creativity and enthusiasm required to accomplish these kinds of images. So I want to show you a number of images and break them down into the steps required to nail the shots. These are all single shots, so there isn't any Photoshop trickery involved at all. These are all captured in camera. Now this is the first image I'd like to show you. I had an awesome time a while back with these two great photographers, and while out under the stars, we decided to take some portrait style shots. Now whilst on the subject of shooting portrait style images under the night sky, the most important thing is always how you light the subject. As you can see here with these larger group shots, I've used flash to provide the lighting and utilised a long shutter speed to capture the background ambient light of the night sky and landscape. Now if any of you are familiar with using off-camera flash with your traditional portraits, perhaps during twilight or sunset, you'll understand what I'm talking about. The settings we dial into the camera are always to capture the background ambient light, then we add whatever light is necessary to light our foreground subjects. So, getting back to our example, the key to these simple shots is always going to be how we light them. Okay, now the key to this shot with the two guys was to get them on the same focus plane. So I had one guy here, the other one over there, both using their tripods and their cameras. The way that this shot was lit was pretty simple really. Um, all we did was touch one of the buttons on the back of the screen to illuminate the LCD screen, but only for a moment. So in other words, we just click the button once, click it again to click it off. And you have to do that without moving your hand. And that's why they've got their hands on the camera, you'll notice. The other key to this is the fact that they've got one hand on the top of the tripod. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but if they're holding the tripod with their legs nicely spread apart with the another hand on the back of the camera, what happens is that you've got a good point of contact and you're not going to sway around and move. Because for the 10 second exposure that I took with these two guys, if they had have moved at all, especially when that light was on, then they're going to blur. Um, this is one of the difficult things about taking these types of shots. So having those points of contact makes all the difference. So all they did was uh, I just counted them in. I had the camera shutter speed at uh, 10 seconds, ISO 4000, and shutter wide open at f1.8. This is the Nikon. 20, this is the camera I use, the D750, with the Nikon 20mm f1.8 wide open at f1.8. And uh, the 10 seconds is required to get the stars to show in the background and the ISO 4000 at f1.8. I only needed a very split second of light to come from the back of that LCD screen. And that's why you don't leave the screen on because it'll just blow out and, and flare their faces quite uh, dramatically, actually, you'd be surprised. I've taken quite a few shots like this and uh, certain cameras have certain coloured lights on the back. You'll notice a lot of the Canon cameras have red lights and so when they press their button a red light goes on the face and you'll see from some of these example images how the, the red light faces. Other cameras have green lights and some just have this typical white. So the LCD screen at the back tends to be, especially with a nightscape image, a fairly white light and a fairly dull image which is what we're looking for. I've taken quite a number of shots using this simple method and as long as the subject can maintain their pose they always turn out really well. One of the other ways to obtain a simple nightscape portrait is to shoot a silhouette. One of the great benefits of silhouettes is that you don't need any lighting at all and that makes the process even easier, especially when shooting yourself out in the field. Even so, you still need to hold very still for the duration of the exposure, which isn't always as easy as it may seem. A couple of things which will help with our silhouettes. Firstly, make sure our subject is framed against a clear background. We don't want too much clutter. Even though we usually hate light pollution in our nightscapes, 
I've found it to be very helpful when making a person or group stand out as a silhouette against the sky. As you can see, most of the images I've shown here have been quite short exposures captured with a very wide open aperture. Personally, I prefer the look of such images, but it's certainly possible to take longer time frame shots at a more traditional wide angle with everything in focus. To achieve that, we would set up our camera pretty much the way we would to shoot any wide angle night sky image, usually with a longer exposure time coupled with a standard high ISO. From there, we simply put ourselves or our friends in the frame and hold as still as we possibly can. An extension of this technique is to add a simple backlight into the equation. This shot, for example, utilizes a single flash on a light stand behind the subject. It's important to make sure the flash is concealed behind the person to prevent flaring when the flash fires. Okay, so this is the typical flash setup that I would use using a, a small light stand like this with the flash attached on the top. Then I can just sit it down at whatever distance in front of the subjects I need to, to get the shot. Uh, and sometimes I can uh, just move that up and down. I can set the level on the flash manually to whatever is necessary. Usually it's a fairly low level to get these sorts of shots. Other times, uh, what I will do is put the flash on the ground, really low down on a simple little stand like that. And uh, that enables me to just put it right down low to the ground. Occasionally I'll use these MagMod modifiers. You can see there's a gel there and the other one is a grid which is fantastic for stopping spillage of the flash um, all over the place and they just attach onto the flash with magnets just like that and that is a fantastic system. Um, simple manual flashes is what I always use for those types of shots. This is a great way to help our subject stand out from the background and yet still have a wonderful bright night sky image. The examples shown on screen now were both taken with 85mm f1.8 lenses on a full frame camera. This is the classic portrait focal length lens and I made use of the fast f1.8 aperture to deliberately throw the background stars out of focus and bring clarity to the subject, thereby creating the bokeh look. This is something that can be achieved with similar fast aperture lenses such as the 35mm f1.4 or 50mm f1.8. Generally the key is to shoot wide open and get close enough to the subject to compress the background which enhances the portrait characteristics. Okay now I use a remote shutter release and I've talked about this plenty of times before. This makes it so much easier to actually trigger the shutter on the camera remotely so I don't have to you muck around using timers or anything like that and especially when you have more than one person shooting the, um, the same shot um, this is just so much easier you just get up on the on the uh, spot where you want to shoot press the trigger and away you go okay so our next example is very similar to some we've already considered but with one very interesting difference Okay, now when taking this shot, I use very similar camera settings to the previous example shown. Uh, fairly short exposure time, I think 10 seconds. Uh, it was ISO 4000, and I had the, the lens wide open at f1.8. The reason for that is I want to get that bokeh out of focus background. The, the high ISO is so I can accommodate the shorter exposure time. I need the 10 seconds to get enough of that ambient background to shine through. Now, how did I light this lantern and how did I light the faces? I didn't use the LCD screen as I did in my previous example. Let me show you. I used, you'll laugh at me, Christmas fairy lights. And what I did, I bought this on eBay and it's a remote controlled uh, string light. And what I did, I cut all the lights off the string except the very first one. So when I, um, and I use the remote control so I can operate this from a distance. So when I press it on, it just stays on until I press it off again. And all I did 
was trial and error. Now, this is what you have to do sometimes. You just try things out. So I pressed, I told them to hold the lantern very still, brace themselves as best they can, press the little green arrow, and then click it off straight away. Now, this little light here, tiny little LCD, LED, or whatever it is, bulb, was hidden inside the lantern. And of course, when I pressed that on, I only had it on for a couple of seconds, it was enough light at that high ISO and a wide open aperture to light their faces and look as if the light source was actually the lit lantern itself. But no, it wasn't. If I had have lit that lantern with a, with a flame, uh, it would have totally blown out. It would have been way too bright. So sometimes you have to get creative and use some, a little bit of ingenuity and create and invent things. Uh, and that's what I did. Simple as that. So I hope that gives you some incentive to get out under the stars and try something a little bit different. It may take some trial and error, but you'll get some pretty interesting images in the end. Okay, well, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch. And if you'd like to see more of this type of material, I'd love you to subscribe to the channel. If you hit the bell icon next to the subscription button below, you won't miss any of my new videos. Anyway, I'll be back with some more interesting Nightscape Images content, and I'll look forward to seeing you then.